Creative Commons a few years ago uh, rebooted or restarted our global network. And we uh, took a good hard look at what was working well and, was, and what wasn't working well. And there were a lot of changes in the network. <clears throat> One of the structural changes were uh, network members around the world said, you know, a lot of us work in open glam. We work with museums, archives, et cetera. A lot of us are uh, lawyers and we work on uh, copyright reform. A lot of people work in policy. Uh, a lot of people work in open education. Uh, some people said, you know, I'm really interested in community development in helping uh, provide mentorships and training uh, and uh, connection and networking opportunities. And so these different ideas emerged in the network. What we collectively decided to do were to create these spaces we called platforms. And so these are not technical platforms. Think of them as working groups. And so the idea of the open education platform is this is a space where anybody who's in the CC network and frankly, anybody outside the CC network, everybody's welcome to platforms, uh, can come together. We meet on a regular basis online. We have a listserv, we have a Slack channel where there's kind of constant conversations and sharing of information and events and other things. Um, and we came together as a group and we decided that we would work together um, on a certain set of goals that we discussed and decided collectively uh, that we would, to the extent possible, work on activities and projects that we needed collectively around the world. So we weren't going to focus just on one country or one particular region if we could avoid it. We were going to try to pick topics um, that were global in nature wherever possible. Um, and we, um, so we, we came together and over time, this network has grown or this platform has grown uh, quite large. So we now have, I think we're up to 90 countries are represented in the platform. And we have give or take 1100 people who've signed up to be on the listserv and on the, <laughs> and on the Slack channels. And so that's, um, that's amazing. Uh, that's happened over the past couple of years. Um, we've had a lot of good meetings. If you look at the, um, if you pull up that link that Genrin shared, and you scroll down the page for the open ed platform, uh, the very first link, it says, see the platform working document. If you click on that link for the working document, it'll take you to a Google doc and you'll see all the past meetings um, and the, uh, the agendas and the notes for those meetings. Um, there's an overview of what the platform is. Um, there's a definition of platforms. We've got a scope. So we said, look, we're gonna work in uh, open content or OER open practices and in open policies, open education policies. There's a rationale for why we exist. We have a vision, mission, a set of goals. We're gonna come back to these goals a little bit later today as we talk about what we wanna work on together in 2021. Uh, the platform members worked really hard on the principles and shared values um, that, they, that we all have and how we were going to work together and how we'd uh, really well, it's our shared <laughs> principles. Uh, we talked about uh, activities and what we wanted to do. A uh, part of today's uh, presentation and agenda is we funded six activities in 2020. And a lot of those activity leaders are here to give you an update on what they're working on. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see there's a whole section on how we want to work together, which gets uh, into kind of the logistics of how we communicate and how we meet, et cetera. And then the bottom simply says that we've got some uh, some staff at Creative Commons, which is Jenner and me, uh, to help do the uh, to set up the meetings and take minute notes and to provide uh, staff support or uh, uh, secretariat support, if you will, to the platform. And so that's the idea. Um, I would say that we have done a really good job uh, inviting people in, although there are still countries that are not represented. We still have uh, many voices around the world that we'd like to to join us and we've not reached out far enough yet. So there's still work to be done. Um, largely, I would say we are uh, a group that is, uh, is, is well situated uh, to do great things together with a lot of uh, potential that we haven't yet uh, worked together to fully leverage. And so part of where all of the platforms are, and by the way, we're not the only platform. There's the open education platform. There's the copyright platform, which largely focuses on policy and copyright reform. There's the GLAM platform. GLAM stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. And there's the community development platform. That platform is new. 
they haven't, they've only had a couple meetings, but they're, they're really focused on uh, community development, uh, building ladders of participation for people to come in and join the CC network. And all of the platforms will be working with the community development platform uh, to really kind of ramp up uh, our own activities. Uh, so that's in a nutshell the platform. If any of you that are new have uh, have problems getting into the listserv or the Slack channel, um, I'm going to type my email in here. I'm, I'm cable at creativecommons.org. You can feel free to email me anytime, or you can reach out to Jenrin, and we'll make sure that we uh, we take care of whatever uh, challenges you might have. So let me just pause there for a second. Are there any questions from the new people about the platform and and what it is? And Jenner, did I miss anything? Just trying to get a couple links for folks, but um, I'll follow up there. Okay, excellent. All right, back to the agenda. Uh, the next item is an announcement. Uh, we're very excited. We have uh, we've been working very closely with the uh, SDG Academy. I think uh, all of you know. Uh, in open education, we have talked, and, and um, uh, Chandrika, could you please uh, come up to the stage, click on the little button that says audio and video, and and we'll let you, uh, we'll invite you up. There she is. I'm going to go ahead and add her. And uh, as we all know, we've all uh, looked at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals uh, for quite some time and thought, and number four, SDG4, is something that we uh, have talked a lot about. Uh, it's a goal that the UNESCO recommendation on OER is fundamentally based on, as UNESCO is the, the main entity in the UN uh, group that is, is focused on education and accomplishing SDG4. So we've talked about this. We've had conversations in the platform about what we, as the Creative Commons platform, can do to support the SDGs. And we've had broader conversations about what role open education has to play in helping people become aware of the SDGs, in providing education, open educational resources about the SDGs, et cetera. So um, I, through actually through Kurt, who's, uh, who's with us today from MIT, was connected to this amazing group called the SDG Academy. And we have with us uh, Sandrika, who's, or Chandrika, apologies, uh, who is the uh, director of the SDG Academy and has an exciting announcement for us today. Welcome, Chandrika. Would you like me to put up your slides or did you want to share those yourself? Um, hi, Cable, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm happy to share them if I can figure out uh, what I have to do. It's uh, at the bottom of the window. You'll see a little computer screen with a red slash through it. If you click on that and then you can select the application for your slides and then share that application, we'll tell you when it comes up and we can all see it. Okay, just give me one moment. Um, it's only allowing me to share the entire screen, but can you see my screen now? Uh, it's coming up now. Yes, we can see it. So if you oh, take right. your slides and go full screen for your whole computer screen, that should work. Is that good? Can you see this now? Not yet. We're seeing your screen, but not the slides. All right. It's full screen on my computer, so it should just be a hopefully a lag. And we've that Jenrin and I tested your slides earlier. If you'd like, I can just put them up, and you can say next slide. Okay. Why Why don't we do that? Because this might take. Uh, so let me stop sharing okay. and go back, and I'll rely on you. All right, let me try. And I'm going to share. Did that come through okay? Not yet. There we go. All right, and I will, I'm going to mute myself and then I'm going to go full screen. So, Jenner, and I'm going to go full screen. Would you, I'm going to mute, but would you tell me? Great. So, Okay, before I begin, I know I know we're still waiting. Oh, there we go. There mm -hmm. we go. Uh, great. So 
thank you for having me on and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Chandrika Bahadur, I'm director of the SDG Academy, and I want to talk to you about a wonderful a new development uh, that uh, courtesy Cable and the team at Creative Commons, we are very pleased to announce. But let me give you a little background of who we are. This won't take very long, but I think it'll be uh, useful to make sense of the announcement. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, we are an online learning platform uh, dedicated to teaching about the Sustainable Development Goals. Our vision is a world in which the Sustainable Development Goals are achieved um, and through the efforts of practitioners but also citizens and educators uh, that have access and have the tools that they need to actually uh, learn and teach uh, sustainable development. Our mission is to create and curate relevant content on the Sustainable Development Goals and make this content available globally uh, to prepare the, the, the next generation to achieve sustainable development. So that's what we were set up for. Our mandate comes uh, from the United Nations, from the then Secretary General Ban Ki-moon when he uh, was in charge of the process of setting up the or designing the SDGs. Um, and we are not formally part of the UN, but we uh, do work very closely uh, with the Office of the Secretary General. Next slide, please. What do we do? Um, so we have a few core principles that I, I want to make sure we, uh, we articulate. The first is we chose very early on, we made a uh, we made a strategic choice to use technology as our pedagogical channel of uh, of teach of teaching and of delivery um, and the reason we did that was that our mandate was to reach young people uh, interested in sustainable development around the world and to be able to do that quickly to be, do, to be able to do that at scale we needed to go with technology um, our second principle is that all of our materials are created by uh, faculty that we invite, but this is faculty from different parts of the world, from different institutions. Some are academic, some are practitioners. And so what we're able to put together are courses and course materials that have many different perspectives uh, from people who ordinarily would not collaborate. So these are people who would otherwise create their own courses in their institutions. Uh, but because they're working with the academy, they're able to work together and give students very, very different perspectives on the same topic. We believe that's essential when you're teaching to a global audience. Uh, the third is our content is high quality and engaging because that's what you need to actually keep people interested. Um, and so we make our content, content the way documentary films are made, with the same kind of attention to scripting and storytelling um, and visuals. Uh, so that we're able to retain interest of people who are maybe just dropping in to see what we're like, but then really we want them to get hooked onto the content and the, and the subject matter. Uh, we do two things. We reach the general public. So most of our students are learners from around the world interested in these topics, but we also work with our parent institution, which is the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is a network of now around 1,400 universities around the world. And what we do is we provide our content to these universities so that they can use the materials while they're teaching sustainable development to their students. So we have very much, if you like, a B2B, which is our university partners, and then a B2C, which is um, the general public. Our materials are free of cost, and they're available to everyone around the world. And these are sort of our core guiding principles, which is what... Uh, makes this meeting and this community so attractive to us. What you're seeing now is a snapshot of most, I don't think all, but most of the courses that we have on offer. Uh, next slide. We've reached so far about half a million learners around the world in 193 countries. Uh, we have 32 full length or, or short courses uh, but we also make all of these courses available in their individual modules and individual uh, segments so people can break them up, put them together again, use them as they see appropriate. Next slide. Who actually takes these courses? This is a very quick profile of um, who, uh, where our learners come from. Um, as you see, one of our challenges is that even today, most of our learners come from middle and high income countries, and that's natural given that our medium is technology and so a lot of this is to do with bandwidth and connectivity um, but if you look at the geographic breakdown we have Europe and North America still leading in terms of uh, where our background where our students come from 
Partly that is because our courses are mostly in English, uh, but expanding uh, the, the language offering is something that's very much part of our goal. Next slide. Uh, we have a wonderfully good gender balance. In fact, most of our, with just a little bit of, a, of an edge, our typical learner is female uh, in her mid thirties uh, with a master's, uh, with a bachelor's uh, level of education. Um, and of course, from the developed world with English as a first language. So this just gives you a basic sense of who, who is it that uh, uh, comes, to, uh, comes to us. Now, there's a question here already which says, is it only institutions in our network that can use the materials? And the answer is no. Um, and I'll come to that in a minute. Let's, let's move on. Next slide. This is our library, and this is accessible to anyone in the world who wants to look at the individual components of our courses. Uh, this just gives you a little, the library is relatively new, um, about uh, a year and some old, and what you can see is the content is actually getting used, but of course we'd like it to go to a much wider audience, and it's really available for anyone to see as they, um, as they want, and it's available completely free. Next uh, slide. We've also launched just now, just a, this is fresh, um, just a couple of uh, months old, a community of practice. And this is really geared towards uh, creating what we haven't done so far, which is a two-way flow of knowledge creation. So till now, we've been the curators and creators of the content, but what we want to do with the community of practice is to invite uh, people who are interested in learning and teaching sustainable development to uh, come to our platform, become members, and then they will be able to create content which will be shared with everyone else. So it really is now uh, uh, becoming, through the community of practice, a two-way uh, communication and a two-way sharing of knowledge creation. And we want what we, we're doing that for several reasons. One, we cannot create all of the content in the, in the world. But the second is that by doing this, we're going to be much more representative of faculty from around the world in a way that we can't do if we do this by invitation only. Next slide. We've, of course, in these times, uh, expanded our offering and adapted to the reality of the world that we're living in right now. Uh, we've done two things. One is we have increased the content that we have on, on COVID-19 and responses to COVID-19. Uh, but we've also made our learning on uh, for the formal courses more accessible to people around the world. And we've also pivoted to many more live events where we're inviting experts in real time to share resources and knowledge as it's evolving. So this is part. And of course, you know, with all other forms of online learning uh, during the pandemic, we've seen a, a heightened engagement uh, with the platform, with people wanting to understand, make sense of what is a very confusing time. And I think that's something that we are, uh, we are very cognizant of, the responsibility that we have to be a resource for people who are looking for answers, not just on COVID-19, but also on the proximate and the related causes and solutions. And that's what we focus on. And that's what the SDGs focus on, on ensuring that there is a way to think about the world in a more integrated manner, looking at the environment and the economy and the, and the social dimensions. And so COVID-19 is a, is a reminder of this interconnectedness, but we're making a special effort to respond to the demands that are coming from our learners. Um, next slide. This is a new project. We're very excited about this. And I think this is the first forum where we're formally announcing this externally. Uh, we're launching Mission 4.7, which is um, a collaboration with UNESCO, with the Ban Ki-moon Center uh, of Global Citizenship, and us at the SDG Academy. Uh, this is named for SDG Target 4.7, which really focuses on teaching sustainable development, teaching culture, teaching values, uh, teaching global citizenship. Um, and so this is a very focused mission that we are we're going to be launching it formally in December. Uh, the idea is to uh, extend what we do to every level of education. So starting from pre-K all the way up to professional lifelong learning and to bring together content and educators to really see how can we uh, enter systems of education and really to go, you know, speak with ministries of education around the world, speak to educators at different levels of education and to try and uh, bring the, the, the core principles of 4.7 and a shared curriculum 
uh, into practice in teaching around the world. So this is relatively new, very exciting, and it will actually be built on uh, the kind of environments and the kind of ecosystems that uh, Creative Commons has created. Next slide. So the announcement. Um, what we're very, very uh, excited about is that as of this year, um, all of the future STG Academy educational content will be created under CC by NC 4.0. So we're formally adop adopting uh, and making all of our content open. Uh, why are we doing this? We we're also backtracking and going back to our faculty and getting permission for existing courses, and that's a work in progress. Uh, but moving forward, everything will be uh, under, under this license. Now, why are we doing this? The first is we want to open up even more the STG Academy content to learners to be able to use it, to be able to adapt it, to contextualize it, to uh, combine it with other uh, content so that the end experience for learners in classrooms is actually more relevant than what we can offer at a, at a global scale. So that's the first reason. The second is a, we want to place the STG Academy at the heart of the open education resources ecosystem uh, to make it open, to make it free, to make it accessible for everyone to, to learn. Now, of course, it already is all these things, but by doing this formally, what we are signaling to all of our users and all of our learners is that they do, uh, that they're empowered and that they're free to take this content and use it um, in, in, in however, whichever manner that they would, uh, they find it useful. Our third reason is we want to expand more. You know, the, the sustainable development community is a large community, but it's nowhere as large as it needs to be for us to have impactful change in the world. And so what we want to do is very quickly double our, uh, our, our reach, double our presence, and make this available, make the materials available to a new audience that hasn't had access to it so far. We want to build the academy content as a global public good and that's very important for us because we do believe that once knowledge is created it is there for consumption it is there for addition it is there for modification and to be built upon and so we we don't want any aspect of it to stay closed and of course uh, as i mentioned briefly earlier we are very keen to extend the reach of the academy to communities that probably needed the most but where we've been less successful uh, reaching um, low-income countries, middle-income countries, places where language is a barrier, and we need um, help with, the, with that uh, from uh, this community. Next slide. I think we're ending there. So thank you again. Um, I'm happy to take questions, but I wanted to underline two things. One, that this is an incredible opportunity for us, of course, uh, to be part of this community, but I also hope it's an opportunity for the community and for all of your networks uh, to have access to material that is cutting edge, it's um, relevant, it's impactful, and um, it, it is something that uh, is as uh, important today as, as it could be given the world that we live in. And so please join us um, in this journey of um, helping people understand, but also contribute to the solutions for sustainable development. Cable, over to you. Thank you so much. That was an amazing presentation. Uh, let me ask your permission. Is it okay if we share the slides out uh, with the platform? Absolutely. Thank you very yeah, much. Of course. Uh, so uh, we'd like to open the floor for questions. And there's two ways that you can ask questions. Uh, you can ask in the chat window, which I think some people already have. Uh, or if you'd like to come up to the stage and uh, and have video and audio and ask your question that way, you're most welcome to come up. Uh, if you want to do that, you have to click on the uh, the red button in the upper right corner that says something to the effect of uh, share my audio and video. And uh, either is fine. Jenrin, have you been tracking the chat window? Are there some questions that that you'd like to flag and call out? Yeah. Sure. The, the first question that I noticed came from Paula. She asks, how can we help? I thought that was a good question to start with. I, it's a great question. And uh, I, I think there are several uh, things that we need help in. Um, I would say the first thing is just getting to understand what the needs are of learners around the world. I think, again, we have uh, you know, we have our own experience uh, uh, on this, but what I would really encourage everybody in this community is to look at uh, uh, the content, look at the look at the materials first, and then come back to us to say, 
how can this be more helpful? Uh, are there ways of reformatting the material or is there, uh, is there additional material that you think would be helpful? Uh, you know, one of the tensions we always have is because we're catering to a global audience, our materials are great for a global overview, but then naturally the next step is, well, how does this apply in my country or how does this apply in my community? And that's something that we may not have the capacity to respond to immediately. Uh, but what we can do is leverage our network um, and leverage this community to try and make connections, to try and help connect you with academics who work on these materials and maybe help provide, uh, not directly, but indirectly, uh, some of those resources. So I think the first thing is look at the material and tell us what how it can be more helpful to you. And then the second area where, uh, where I think uh, we really do need help is how do we expand what we are doing and how do we make it uh, reach an audience that maybe theoretically is interested in sustainable development or is thinking about some of these questions, uh, but hasn't really engaged with them in a deep way. Um, and these could be policymakers, these could be uh, students, these could be professionals, people working in the corporate sector. Uh, but what we'd love to do is to introduce them to these issues. What we found is that once people start thinking about these topics, even if they don't have a background in it, they, these are such topical issues. These are so interesting for people in their day to day um, that we find that they get engaged very quickly. So we'd love to expand that experience for more people. Fabulous. Uh, let me go to Kurt next. Thanks, Kurt, for coming up to this. Anybody else who'd like to come on up, just click on that button and we'll bring you right up here. Uh, let's go to Kurt and then we'll go back to Jenrin for some more questions from chat. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad to hear about this. I'm really excited. Uh, I've been working with a, uh, an educator uh, who's been building some uh, course materials, uh, and I know she'll be uh, very excited to apply some of this stuff, for instance. Uh, I had a question about um, what you've learned about the different types of uses that the library of your materials are getting relative to the full courses, um, and if you have any, any expectations about um, moving beyond the videos that are currently in the library to some of the, the other kind of interactives and things that are part of the courses. Thank you. Great. Uh, so I think right now the library is predominantly used by educators. Um, I think the, 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 the videos, the courses are used by people who want to learn about this stuff, right? But, but that's a, it's, a, it's a bigger time commitment to actually commit to an entire course. Uh, what the library uh, allows uh, educators to do is to stitch their own courses together. So they can pick and choose things from across courses, different faculties, different topics, um, and make something of their own. So that's where we've seen uh, most of the usage come in. Um, our quizzes and our assessments as of now are not as part of the library because the idea of the library is that people will take the material and then make their own uh, and, and figure out exactly how they want to assess people on their own. But again, if the demand comes in of including other kinds of materials, we'd be more than happy to respond. Yeah. Thanks. Kurt, you have to show us your t-shirt. I think I know what that is. Is there? Ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from the uh, from the uh, icon project. Right. Yeah. Uh, Jen, back to you. What else do we have in the chat for questions? Uh, well, we've got a few. So I'll just start with the um, the first one after um, after Paula's question, which is very related. So Camilla asks: the coronavirus pandemic has surprised all of us, um, and the pandemic is not over yet. How can we help and support marginalized populations in the time of COVID nineteen? Um, who may not have enough devices to accommodate the simultaneous educational needs of multiple children. I know you touched on that a little bit with Paula's question, but I didn't know if you had anything to add. So, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, the content that we create is not, uh, not, in, not used very much by people who are really struggling for, for connectivity and for, for basic connection. I do think, though, when you think about SDG 4, um, this is a fundamental challenge, and it's a, it's a slightly different challenge from the one that we've been tackling, uh, but it's the challenge of what do you do with children who are, have been now out of school for uh, several months and are likely to continue to be out of school or intermittently be in and out of school. Um, and I think that is where uh, the one of the first things to do is to think about how open educational resources can actually uh, take away some of the barriers that already exist. Um, and I think uh, 
we have to figure that. I mean, I, I don't think anybody has the answer to these questions right now. I know that in most countries where um, uh, where going digital and being online is 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 a luxury. Uh, children have not learned or are not learning for a really long time. And so I think being um, creative about how content is repurposed so that it is made available. Uh, we have some examples. All of those examples are suboptimal, frankly, uh, because this is a difficult problem to fix. Uh, but I do think that making sure that the, the content is not restricted is the first step in that process. And then we have to figure out how to get it there, which is a different and a more challenging problem. Uh, so I'm sorry, I don't have any great answers to this, except to say that if there is one issue in the world that needs resolution right now is how do you get children back in school? And it's something that uh, we are involved, not specifically through the academy, but at SDSN, looking very closely at, uh, at how we can support that effort. Thank you. Yeah, I, I liked how you initially had also mentioned the um, leveraging other networks, like looking at who we have in our networks too. I know CC has a lot of um, really wonderful NGOs in our networks that look at some of the offline options too. Um, so yeah, I, I, I really appreciate you responding to that question. We had a, a couple questions about um, your decision for the NC license. Um, Lucy, I think maybe it's easier if Cable and I follow up with you afterward, if you want to reach out to us on some of the nuances of for-profit institutions working with NC licensed content. Um, but yeah, I think a, a couple of folks were wondering about the, um, the reasoning behind the NC license. So I think maybe we'll take that offline. Uh, I mean, you know, for us, the most important thing was that uh, we should be able to, uh, I mean, because these are educational institutions primarily that are going to be uh, modifying the content. That was the most, that was the driving uh, concern. But I know Cable, we had many, many discussions on uh, what would be the right, uh, right uh, license to go under. And I think this satisfies all of the requirements that we had, which is that, you know, we have faculty from different institutions. They're creating this content in their, quasi-independent capacity, but then they also want to make sure that this is made available. They also want to make sure that uh, this is attributed accurately. I mean, there were all sorts of factors that went into it. So we can we can discuss that bilaterally. Oh, a few questions about language, which you addressed in one of your slides. As people asked, is this only in English? It sounds like you've got, uh, is it true that there are multiple languages already available and you're going to do more? Was that the message? So it's predominantly in English, but we do have several courses that have transcripts that are in multiple languages. Uh, we also have a few courses and we've started partnerships. So for example, one of our newer partnerships is with, with Edrak, which is the uh, uh, platform for online learning in the Middle East. And they've translated in collaboration with us a couple of the courses into Arabic. Uh, we are looking, uh, we have a similar partnership with uh, with platforms in Latin America, in China, and we're looking to uh, find a good, smart way of translating our courses and or creating content in multiple languages, not English necessarily. Um, and, you know, the challenge always is um, just the just the volume. You know, these are very long courses. This is translations expensive and so fi finally just comes down to you know the resources we have and what we can uh, um, what we can do with them but this is something where you know we're, we're constantly looking for good ideas and we would be grateful for uh, for suggestions on how to do this excellent uh, thank you everybody for all of your questions and a big round of applause for the SDG Academy. We are just, if you can give a round of applause in the chat, go ahead. <laughs> we are absolutely thrilled. Uh, at Creative Commons, we view this as an incredible gift to the commons and just so happy to be uh, more tightly linked in the work to help uh, use education plus SDGs to make a major change in the world. Um, I, you, you know, at Creative Commons, we're going through a strategy refresh right now. And in fact, we've call, we're calling out the SDGs in our strategy as a set of uh, global challenges that we also intend to work on uh, as we engage in our work over the coming years. So many more conversations coming. Absolutely, and I just want to call out uh, my colleagues who are here in the room, uh, Shannon Cobran and Florencia Librizi. 
Uh, they're both here. They've been responding to some of the questions in chat. And so please feel free to reach out to all of us if uh, you have any further questions. And thank you, Cable and Jenrin, for this opportunity. Yes, thank you. And I can. Uh, I, I also want to thank your colleagues. They have been uh, very generous with their time and uh, and their expertise. And it's just been a joy to work with the SDG Academy. So thank you. And as as we know, there's more work to do, and we'll be in touch soon. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. That was a very an exciting announcement. We're going to move forward with uh, more exciting presenters. So for uh, for everybody, we've got uh, Nitha, uh, Werner, Shivi, and Florence. If all of you will please uh, click on the red button and ask to come up on the stage, we will uh, invite you to come up. And so I'm clicking on people now. And it takes a minute. So go ahead and click on that button that says audio and video, and we will invite you up. I see Shivy. Hi. And there's Werner. And I have, I think, most of your documents that I can screen share on your behalf. Uh, if I don't, you, you're welcome to screen share your own work. So let's see here. Excellent. There's Florence. Hello. And let's see, who are we missing? All right, uh, well, Jenner, let me do this. Um, if you see more people asking, excellent. Um, let me start with uh, with Werner. And I'm going, would you like to put your slides up or would you like me to? Go ahead, Gable. Okay, I will in just a minute. I realize I should give a bit of an introduction to this section first. Uh, so uh, in 2020, um, as difficult as 2020 has been and as crazy as it has been, one of the good things that came out of 2020 is that all of the Creative Commons platforms received uh, $20,000 in program funds that they, that they could use to advance the goals of that particular platform. So uh, the GLAM platform, copyright reform, open education, uh, they all had $20,000. The community development platform uh, ran a program where they were uh, giving out small grants called the Community Activities Fund. Uh, so we all did different things. Um, what the open education platform did, you'll see linked in the agenda. You'll see a blog post with links to all of these fine people and their good work. Uh, and they are now a few months, a month or two into their project. And we wanted to give them an opportunity to talk about the work that they're doing. Um, now, this is a, pro a, pro a proposal or project that we'd like to continue into 2021 and beyond. Uh, we don't yet know what our budget is for 2021. That's still to be determined by the Creative Commons Board uh, at their December board meeting. So um, I'll be looping back with the platform when we know more about that. But for 2020, we have these six funded projects. And so, um, so Werner, uh, the floor is yours. If you'd like to share your slides, go right ahead. Um, Cable, how do you share slides? So if you look at the bottom of the screen, there's a there's the uh, video icon, the mic, and then next to the, to the right of the mic, there's a little computer screen with a, a red slash through it. If you click on that, you can choose the application window that your slides are in, and then you can share. Oh, it looks like you threw yourself out of the room, or somebody else might have. <laughs> That's OK. Uh, let's move on. Let's go to Shivy. We'll come back to Werner in a minute. Are you ready to go? The floor is. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I will see if this works to share. Oh, now we've got two screens. Um, Werner, would you like to go ahead? Go ahead, Werner. The floor is yours. And for everybody in the audience, if you double click on his slides, they'll get bigger on your screen. Oh, it looks like he lost audio. 
So Werner, we'll leave your slides up. We'll go. We'll have Chevy go, and then we'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, go ahead. Sounds good. Um, is everyone able to see mine? Great, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. It's good to see everyone in the open platform meetings. Um, uh, I'm from an organization called Learning Equality, and as you can see here, we make essentially open learning um, materials and software um, and the, the tools to use them. So we address specifically the connectivity issue that prevents um, communities without access to the internet from accessing and making use of open educational resources and digital learning materials more generally. Um, our project within the open platform activities is about identifying socio-emotional learning resources for open digital learning projects. And um, when we refer to those kinds of projects, we're mostly talking about things like libraries, educational platforms, learning management systems, or as many of you who are educators might have seen, the types of um, resource and link lists that go around a lot in the um, wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so socio-emotional resources specifically, um, these are some examples that we've um, given at our own organization. There are any types of resources which intend to help learners um, make sense of their relationships with themselves, with society, with the world. Um, and so what Chandrika shared about the SDG Academy, for instance, is an example of something which could be used in a classroom as social emotional learning um, resources. It can encompass a really broad spectrum of things. And that's what our project is focusing on. So we're really trying to expand the availability and um, reach of socio-emotional learning uh, resources for open digital learning projects. Here's an example of how we might do that um, on our own platform, Colibri. Um, it's an open source education platform for people who are disconnected from the internet. Um, it's used in over 200 countries. And the way that um, we're able to provide it is that we make use of these types of open educational resources um, in order to share them with other communities. Um, so you can see here a couple of examples that we've really um, brought forward during the pandemic, um, things about crisis response from communities that ordinarily work with refugees, for instance, um, and a lot of information about domestic violence and um, managing relationships within the home, since that's become something that we've heard a lot more needs for since the pandemic began. And we basically make those available um, in channels on our Colibri platform, which educators can make use of and find other open materials. Like here, um, pictured is a library that we've made about the coronavirus crisis in particular. Um, social emotional resources during the pandemic, of course, using them on Colibri is not um, necessarily an option for everyone, but we can see their use in a lot of different projects. And these are a couple of the examples Like you could see, for example, a family using play-based resources to connect after um, remote learning in schools have everyone really stressed out. Um, hospital administrators could rely on different types of um, resources about things like anxiety and wellness. Um, students could look up different types of information about civic participation, about news, about disinformation. Um, parents explore the ramifications of new technologies. We're seeing a lot of demand and need for these resources. So using our open platform grant, um, we have three projects that we're really working on. The first is to inventory different types of digital SEL resources. So books, games, courses, lesson plans, um, anything which we think would be really useful for this particular bucket of um, resources. We'll be sharing a list of those materials that we know are openly licensed or otherwise available to use as a public good so that other digital learning projects like us can also make use of them. And finally, we're also going to try to do our own advocacy work on materials which aren't openly licensed, but which we believe um, with a little bit of advocacy about the benefits of open and about this community that they could be connected with. We think that they could really expand their reach and they would be willing to do so. Um, so those are the, the projects that, that we're doing really about making these digital SEL materials available for all types of digital education projects. And we really look forward to, um, after that, seeing how this community and others could make use of them. Um, here's a little bit of information 
um, about learning equality, if you'd like to know more about us, and I'll uh, drop my email into the chat as well. We'd love to connect with any of you around this project if you have any leads or just would like to make uh, use of the materials or the list that we produce. But thank you very much to Creative Commons for the opportunity both for the project and to share a little bit about it right now. Excellent. Thank you, Shivy. A little round of applause, everybody in chat. That was fabulous. Uh, and if you would please send me your slides, I'll, if it's okay, I'll share those out on the platform list as well. Um, are there any questions before we move on? We have time for just a couple questions and then we'll move on to our next activities lead. It's okay. And, and uh, everybody just stay up on the stage. We got plenty of room for everybody. Let me see if there are any questions. No, just a lot of clapping. All right, uh, let me go over, uh, Werner, how's your audio? Do you hear me okay? Yes, it's good. Go ahead and share your screen. You're good to go. Uh, going through it now. Just a second, please. If you have problems, I can share it for you, either <laughs> way. anything is happening. That's okay. I'll do it. Uh, all you have to say is next slide. So bear okay. with me here. I'm going to, uh, I'll go ahead and put your slides up. Thank you, Caleb. I'm sorry. I... All right. What's going on here? In the meanwhile, I'll found mine. <laughs> well, the, the shared screen is coming up. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, all the work that you, you guys have done here in the, the CC Summit has been quite an event. And uh, congratulations to all. And, and thank you for the opportunity as well to, to share this. Uh, I think this trend of, of, of work that we have found, I think we found like a, like a nice break for, 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 a, for a big context. Um, well, while the, 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 the screen is shared, um, I think one of the biggest ta uh, problems that we have to face in this COVID pandemic uh, context in the education sphere is is that we were forced to, to transition to a digital um, delivery of education as a means to to to, to continue to the educational uh, work of, uh, with our students and teachers and schools the the closure has really uh, forced us to, to go on the digital but um, we have to ask if we have the, the the platform to really promote an online connected education as a way to to so uh, if you look at the numbers in chile uh, connectivity um you, you might think it's uh, it's uh, it, it, we're very prepared for this transition to digital education uh, so we have a 90 percent Werner, can I inter in, in, interrupt you just real quick? I apologize. Um, your slides are up. People can see them. I'm going to make them go full screen for everybody. And so if you'll just, I'm going to start on slide one. And if you look at your version of the slides on your computer, if you'll just tell me slide two, slide three, I'll move through them for you. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go, go ahead. So you're on the title. title. I'm going to put you on the title slot. Are we okay to start, Cable? Yes. Sorry, I was muted. Yes, go ahead and start. Everybody can see your title slide. The floor is yours. Okay, let's go to the next uh, slide, uh, slide two, please, Cable. Um, here we see um, the distribution of the connectivity uh, in Chile. This is very uh, uh, near information. And what you see in the blue portion is, is the people in Chile that are fully connected. You have optic fiber, broadband access at home, and you have unlimited uh, uh, mobile uh, access and, and unlimited uh, plans. But we're only talking that blue portion is only 8% of, of our country. The rest, uh, is uh, it has a lot of more has a lot more restrictions on on connectivity the 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 orange portion uh, it, we talk uh, it's the part of a population that has uh limited plans on mobile phones and 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 you have um and you have a lot of restrictions especially thinking about uh, uh connectivity for educational purposes um, and in that middle class, uh, C2 to C3, we, we also have a lot of uh, population that do not have access at home. And if you look at that, the yellow uh, uh, picture, uh, connectivity is really restricted. Uh, you have 70% of uh, prepaid mobiles. So prepaid, uh, you know, you put a buck and, and you get... Uh, just a small amount of connectivity. So uh, we have like 90% of, of Chile, it, it has a lot of problems to get connected to this online education. So, and, and you have to deal with, uh, with problems like you have 5 million people in, in Chile that do not have internet access at home. And in the, in the yellow uh, part of the pie, you have a, uh, you have three and a half million people completely unconnected, okay? So next slide, please, uh, number three. So, so this is Chilean's uh, situation, which is not very bad because we, in, the, in the Global Connectivity Index, we're ranked 33 in the world. So what happens to the rest of the world who's, who's, who's behind that? So we have, I think we have a huge challenge uh, in this. And if we look at the region, we found really big problems. Like in Latin America, 32 million children do not have access to internet. And 46% and of the children live in unconnected homes, nearly 40 million. So. And if we go further, for example, the India, you have just a huge, huge challenge related to connectivity and bring this population to online digital. So, so in that sense, um, if online is not feasible, we need to look for alternative uh, ways and means to deliver educational opportunities. And uh, that brought us to, to uh, create this proposal um, and we, we, we bet for, uh, uh, to create offline resources so they can be distributed, uh, in a way that we can, we can reach these people that do not have the, the connectivity. So our project is very small. We, uh, we chose Colibri. What else could we think about using, uh, for offline resources? I can't say much, uh, enough about Colibri. I strongly urge you to, to download it and to find it. It's much more than what we are just doing. We are creating a math content channel uh, for fifth and, and tenth grade. Um, and uh, what Colibri does is that you create, you have different uh, content channels that you can download, but you can also create uh, with a tool called Colibri Studio.
Ja. I lost Werner audio. Jenner and you two? Anybody else lose his audio? Okay. I think he's just re yeah. the session. I think he, he Yeah, we lost your audio. That's okay. Um, Werner, I, I think you were on your last slide and we'll share them out. And oh, there you're back. Go ahead. Hello. Yes, you're good. Go ahead. We can hear you. Go ahead and finish your last slide. When you re-enter a session, you can't hear the speakers on stage until <laughs> you click, so he might That's not. That's okay, Werner. I'm going to uh, I'm going to move on to the next presenter, and we'll share your slides out. So let's go to uh, Nitha. The floor is yours, and I'm going to stop sharing. And okay, Yes, go ahead. Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present my project. Uh, so I'm here to present a short update of the Open Pathology Education Project. Uh, pathology is the study of diseases. And I decided to work on this project because there is a lack of openly available resources for studying pathology. And uh, the aim of this project was to create an educational module in pathology for use for anyone who is interested in studying pathology uh, and particularly for use for medical students. For this project, uh, Wikipedia and Wikiversity are being used as platforms for sharing these resources. On the screen here is the project page for the Open Pathology Education Project on Wikipedia. And the first step of this project was to identify relevant topic areas. This was accomplished and a list was created. And uh, here is the list uh, with the topics. And I am now in the process of adding structured data to the images that I will use in the educational resource. Pathology is a visually oriented subject and uh, learning to identify images makes uh, a large part of learning pathology. So students have to be able to identify uh, a lot of images showing disease conditions. So therefore, it's important that the images in the resource contain structured data for the learners to understand the pattern and to identify a new image correctly. This could also be helpful in the future for machine vision algorithms to correctly classify pathology images. Um, once the structured data is added, I shall add descriptions to each topic area along with uh, relevant references. And these will be presented as an educational resource in Wikiversity. Wikiversity is a sister project of Wikipedia that contains educational resources. Yeah, and uh, that is all. And uh, thank you for listening. Excellent. Round of applause in chat, everybody. That was excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, I see that uh, Vladimir shared the link to the project. So thank you for, for doing so. Uh, let me turn it over to Isla and Florence. Are, are you both presenting? I'll, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, Florence, did you find the link? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying. So uh, this is an attempt, an attempt to show you. Um, it's coming through. Is it sharing? Coming. We can see it. And this just a is an attempt to, to share to a video with you. If it slides, doesn't work, it doesn't work. Go ahead, Isla. So let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Trying to increase the size of the I think slide. You can put it full screen there. Share is not getting bigger. It's <laughs> the computer is so slow. Just Okay. You can see what you've been watching before, Florence. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Will that work? Uh, I think it's no. I 
No, it's not working. Does it work for you or not? Yeah, if it's a YouTube link, maybe just no, share the link working. in chat. Okay, and it's never mind. People could watch at okay, a later that's time. Good idea. Yeah, I will share the link with you. All right, so then I will I'm take trying, it over. Um, I'm going to take over the, the screen share. Move on. And uh, share the. Yeah, I'm. The link with you. Oh, yeah, computer too slow. It's lots of fun. Look at that. Um, yes. Okay. So what we're presenting today is um, the the project that we submitted to the um, Open Education Platform, um, and basically it's a fairly simple project. It's about uh, present creating. Uh, French language teaching materials to introduce copyright to 12 to 15 year olds across uh, Francophone Africa. As far as we understand, um, there's very little. Um, I don't know why. I'm sorry. Are you fine? You want me to share it? I removed the. Yeah, so it was working fine. Okay, mine was working fine. Okay. So here. There you go. Let me cancel that then. Yes. Let's do it again. Do you see the idea? Is that? Yeah, it's fine. Um, I just need to access the okay so uh if we go to the second um essentially let me just introduce both of us um i'm isla i'm from cape town in uh, south africa and florence is uh florence de Ward, and she is from marseille in france and both of us are um we run projects through wiki in africa to um activate open communities across Africa. So um, the projects that we do are about um, making people aware of the opportunities as well as drawing uh, communities together to create content. Um, one of the major focuses that we do is um, education and uh, within that we have um, the French, we, the project that we're presenting today is the French uh, language teaching materials um, to introduce 20, 12 to 15 year olds to Florence, your thing is moving around, right? To, uh, to Francophone, in Francophone Africa, to copyright. Sorry, I'm being distracted by <laughs> the screen. All right, so the activity will create um, a pilot of introductory materials and assignment models uh, to support teachers in the introduction of CC licenses to uh, basically to nine or 12 to 15 year olds. Um, so we're looking at middle school to high school um, age groups. The, um, the reason for this is because as both Vanna and, um, and previous, all of the previous um, presenters have said, there is a big problem with connectivity, but essentially there's also a problem with um, understanding around copyright um, within Africa. Um, and it's better to start, our premise and our belief is that it's much better to start um, giving all the alternatives right at the beginning rather than having to unlearn people um, from the copyright, copyright is the only way uh, everything must be closed scenario. So um, within that, we um, know that the work that we've done, we know that teachers do not have access to online materials that explain copyright or alternatives like CC licenses to their students, and especially not in French. Um, and these materials, there are obviously ones that exist in English, but the French um, Francophonie uh, materials are, are very sp um, scarce. I don't know what the reason behind that is, but it, it is true. Uh, these materials and uh, simple assignments will fill this gap. Um, the open education and open movements cannot be fully appreciated and correctly used if teachers and students do not understand copyright. So I'm repeating myself, but essentially um, that's the premise behind the, the project. 
Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, the open movement cannot be fully understood, um, appreciated and correctly used. Oh, sorry, there's a double, there's a repetition. You told me to move to the next yes. slide. The materials will consist of text and um, graphics with assignments that are simple and easy to understand and fun to engage with and appropriate for the ages. Um, and the student's assignment material will be accompanied by an additional teacher guide with resources and cheat sheets. Um, all materials will be available in a format that is reusable and modifiable and obviously under all the correct licensing as open as possible. Um, to maximize its usefulness to um, the context of poorly connected or even non-connected schools in rural areas. The materials will cover the following subjects, so basic understanding of copyright and CC licenses, how to use and correctly attribute CC media and photographs, which is very important as people get messed that up all the time, and understanding usage with regards to collections, uh, remixing and recreation, so within their, how to apply that within their own school work, as well as any other projects or um, out of school stuff, extracurricular stuff they want to do. The measurable outputs are to contextually adapt an, ex an existing short introductory course to introduce copyright and CC licenses, um, assignment models for teachers, um, a teacher's guide as a resource and additional resources and links. So that's basically the project. Uh, Florence, will add. I, I'd like to give you two tiny elements of context. Uh, the context number one is that with Ayla, we have been working for the past five or six years uh, with students in, uh, in Africa, in various places, in French-speaking Africa and English-speaking Africa. And we have developed in particular a project called Wiki Challenge called Afrique, which has been running for the past four years now. Um, and the kids there are all connected, are all in uh, rural areas or poorly connected areas. And uh, what we do with them is we try to distance to uh, some digital skills, make them write articles for Wikidia, which is the, the baby project uh, related to Wikipedia. And since we do that distance, we realize that they really had no understanding whatsoever of licenses. So the problem is that all these kids, they do not have access to internet. They have access to their mobile phones. So there are plenty of resources that are available online, but those kids, they do not have access to these resources. So I really want to provide something that is packaged and that we sh we sh the way, same way we do with the, our own offline resource that we have been working on the past few years. The other contextual element is that I followed the Creative Commons certificate uh, last summer, uh, and that was a absolutely great time, very inspiring. And I realized that most of the resources that currently exist are online or just um, basic explanation of what the Creative Commons license were. There is rather little resources related to attribution except, of course, for the, the tool on the Creative Commons uh, uh, website. And next to no information in France with regarding re, uh, remixing and, re and collections. So I want to expand on this and mostly work on providing instructional material for the kids. So more quiz and, and system for them to um, exercise and check their own understanding and knowledge. So. The, the contextual elements uh, for the request we made, and we are really grateful that it was accepted. And I'm working on that at the moment. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thank you to all of the presenters. This was uh, really fantastic. I appreciate you all doing uh, such, not only doing the projects, but putting these presentations together for the meeting. Um, I've noticed that uh, Jenrin and others have been adding your resources, your slides and resources that have been shared to the agenda document. I made a note in the chat. So if your slides are not there, if, if you could put your slides online somehow and then link to them. And just a reminder to the presenters, please check the permissions to make sure that everybody can at least has view permissions for the slides. 
And this will be part of the archive of today's meeting, and we'll share those out with the entire Open Ed platform. So if everybody could join me in giving a big round of applause to all of our speakers, thank you so much. This was wonderful. We have about 15 minutes left in the meeting, and we're going to go ahead and move forward. And let me just take those slides down. There we go. Excellent, yes. Clapping, clapping, that was really great. You know, one of, I'm sure that other people noticed this as well, uh, but I saw a theme through many of the presentations we had about, uh, about access and particularly offline access and uh, is an increasing uh, challenge in these times of the COVID pandemic, uh, something that as a platform we're certainly talking about and, and uh, clearly our work is collectively focusing on it. Okay, uh, the last thing we wanna do, I'm actually going to start with the last bullet, the next steps, and then we're gonna work our way back and use the rest of the time. Um, just uh, so if you look at the agenda again, um, the next steps, there will be a December platform meeting. Uh, it will be after the December CC board meeting so that we have some more information about budget and things like that. Uh, I will send out a poll to the entire platform and we'll find a date and time, actually multiple dates and times that work. As you know, with the platform meetings, we always host the, the same meeting in two different times so that we can uh, be uh, we don't want people to have to get up in the middle of the night. So we run the same agenda twice and we share all of those out. Um, so you'll see that coming. Uh, second thing, I just wanna remind people that if you have not signed up to give a lightning talk yet, if that's something you'd like to do, these are, think of them as uh, seven minute TED talks, if you will, about the work that you're doing in open education. I just sent a reminder out to the platform uh, the deadline uh, will remain open or the, the submission will remain open through, I think, this Friday or Saturday. And then I'm going to close that down and we're going to run the first round of lightning talks. And then after we get through that, we'll open it up and more people can sign up to give sessions. So if that's something you want to do and you haven't signed up yet, uh, you have another two or three days to sign up for this first round. If, you're, if you don't want to sign up yet, that's OK. There will be future opportunities. Um, the next thing is that, uh, just to give you a, a heads up, at the December platform meeting, we're going to spend, I think, the entire meeting, uh, unless there are other agenda items that you all would like to discuss, but we'll spend at least a good part of the meeting on developing our 2021 work plan. And so start to think about what are the activities, what's the work, what's the focus that you think that we as the open education platform should have in 2021. That will be the topic. The reason, so we should be talking about that anyway. Uh, we also need to submit our work plan, the platform's work plan to the Creative Commons Global Network Council. So these are representatives from all of the countries in the CC Global Network. Every country has one representative and the platforms need to formally submit their plans to the network for review and approval. So that's, a, and those, our plan has to be done by January 31st of 2021. So we need to get started on building that. We will of course do that together as a platform. It'll be an open, transparent uh, document and process. Everybody will have a chance to uh, provide input and help to write that. So those are the next steps. Uh, with the 12 minutes or so that we have left, uh, we're going to just start that brainstorming process. Uh, what is it that we want to work on? So I'm going back up a bullet in the agenda. Uh, what is it that we would like to work on together in 2021? I've provided a link here under point B, uh, directly back to the platform goals. So if you're wondering what the goals are that we all said we wanted to accomplish in the platform, you can click back, scroll down to goals and get a sense of what those goals are. Um, we've also provided some in these sub bullets, you can just directly type in some ideas you have, uh, feel free to, to add those. And then I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Jenren, who has uh, put together a poll for us. Um, and we're going to all, she's gonna share that poll, walk us through it. We can put in our ideas and then she'll, uh, she'll show us what that word cloud looks like to get a, give us a sense of where people's heads are on this. Jenren, over to you. Sure. So I just kept this really simple. Um, I wanted to. And you're muted. Um, my audio looks like it's unmuted from the side. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can't hear you. 
Let me make sure I'm not muted. Okay. You can hear Jenrin. Okay, I'll stop okay. then. I need to refresh. Go ahead, Jenrin. <laughs> All right, great. Well, sorry, Cable cannot hear, but for all of you who can hear in the chat, um, so this is very preliminary, but we wanted to just get your sense of some top um, favorite ideas for what we could work on in 2021. So if you can, please click on the link that I posted in the chat. It's https www.menti.com slash I4IIHVG932. And there you'll see um, a Menti poll where you can load in your top three ideas for things to work on. This is just one way that we'd love to solicit your input. Um, and that will help us as we, um, we work further on this in December. So I'm gonna share my screen and this will actually show us, I hope, um, your ideas as they come in live. So we'll see a, a word cloud emerge. Ah, here we go. <laughs> so it looks like we've got ideas around um, focusing on mentorship, the UNESCO recommendation, um, different open ed policies, accessibility and inclusion, interoperability, I'm assuming of licenses. Another, let's see, men, Networking and mentorship seem to be the biggest ones right now. That's great. Um, equity, more mentorships, SDGs, perfect, especially after today's presentation and announcement. Um, inclusive design. Okay, so keep your your top choices coming in. This is really helpful. So we we can get a kind of a quick sense or pulse check on what the community's priorities are. This will help influence our, our thinking in our, our next meeting. That's it. And I, I think I'll just leave this, this screen share up as we we continue. Excellent. Thanks, Jenrin. So with the uh, eight minutes we have left, we're just going to open the floor. If anybody would like to come up and ask a question or share an update, just click on uh, share your audio and video. We will invite you up to the stage. If somebody has uh, a question, feel free to type it in the chat. If you've got a new project you're working on that you'd like people to know about, feel free to share that in the chat window. And we'll stop talking for a minute and see if anybody has another topic that we should discuss. As people are thinking, let me just ask, was today's uh, session and agenda useful? Did you find it helpful to hear from your colleagues, hear from the SDG Academy, get a sense of what's going on? You can let us know in chat. We always like to get feedback. Great, the agenda didn't really go as planned, but that's perfectly okay. Paul says, that's normal. <laughs> this is true, Paul. Okay. Well, not seeing any other urgent agenda items, let me just say thank you so much, everybody, for coming. Um, I really enjoyed this session. Love to hear what people are working on. As noted, uh, for all of the people that are new, if you have any trouble at all signing up, please send me an email or you can email Jenrin, and we will uh, make sure that we get you on all the right lists. Um, everybody keep an eye out on the open education platform listserv and on the Slack channel, we'll be sending out updates. Uh, the next meeting will be scheduled in mid-December. We'll send that doodle poll out uh, in the coming weeks. And we wish you all a good summit. We'll see you in another session. Thanks so much.